Okay, seven questions. Yeah. Good. That's a good number. It's a good start. <laughs> okay, first question is, as far as I know, you were right at 250 cc. What is the reason uh, make you finally decide to race at Super Sport and Super Bike not continue to stay at Moto2 and continue uh, to Moto2? So that was um, in 2000, my last year was 250, was 2006, and um, I, basically the team that I was racing for, they didn't have any money, so I um, <clears throat> had to find a different path, and uh, the option was go and work for my dad on his go-kart circuit, or um, try to find another job in another category somewhere. And uh, I got the opportunity to race in super sport in America, so I went to do that, and that that's what started my um, that's what started my path in four stroke racing. Really, I went to went to America and did um, did three years in America, 2007, 2008, 2009. So that was it, really. That was why the, my route went that way, and now I'm here back in the Superbike Championship. Um, and didn't follow the GP path, um, you know, for many different reasons, but that's basically it. Okay, next question is, I heard that you're best friend of Casey Sturian. Do you ever talk with him about the Ducati bike? Because now he is the official test rider of Ducati. And how long is your friendship with Casey Sturian and how it started? Um, so start from the beginning. I first met Casey in 2000 or 99. 1999 or 2000, probably you weren't born yet. Yeah. And uh, when were you born? Uh, 2005. So um, yeah, so I met Casey in I think it was, I think it was 99, the end of 99, and uh, and yeah, he came from Australia. He was obviously very fast straight away, and he was a competitor immediately. You know, me and him on the track were really really close, and we're, we're always fighting uh, for the win. And from that. Um, we kind of we made friends because Casey didn't really have a have a home in the UK, so he used to come to my house and st stay with me because it was where I live in the UK is in the countryside and it's um, it's very quiet and peaceful and it's like what Casey was used to in Australia. So um, for that reason, yeah, just obviously we grew up racing together as, as competitors and then he moved on into MotoGP and my career took a different path and, and now we've met again he's obviously retired but we're uh, we're work colleagues at Ducati and uh, and obviously yeah we definitely talk about the bike um, we talk, he hasn't tried my bike yet the Panigale but he will be I think at some point he will be testing the Panigale and we can share some information but already I think he's uh, he's really keen to 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 get on track with the with the Panigale but obviously the priority for Ducati is the is the GP bike Okay. Yeah. And the third question is how you can get to the podium with Ducati Panigale and how the way you can tame that bike? Uh, so now it's my third year on the Panigale and it's been an evolution. Every every uh, test, every race we get a little bit better and we, we learn something new. and. Um, the first year was difficult, it was really, really difficult. We didn't win any races. I think I had three podiums, maybe four podiums, something like that. Not a lot, not, not a lot of success. And the last year, the second year was much better. We had 18 podiums and I think five race wins. So it was much, much better. Um, and it was just a, you know, me giving my best effort to try and develop the bike, Ducati giving their best effort to try and develop the bike and everything. Know, go in the right direction. We never made any wrong turns, and and the development process has always been, you know, in the right direction. So that's um, that's it really. We've had a lot of stuff to try, and, and new things coming, and uh, I feel like we we made a, a lot of gains last year. Um, but it's continual process, and we're we're still we're still looking for for more more things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice. Never enough. Yeah. <laughs> Next question is: Ducati start to have wings or widget on their bikes at MotoGP. Do you think World Superbike also need uh, that on their bike? With the wings? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Until I try them, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard that they they're obviously positive in the middle of the corner and the really fast corners for um, for downforce, like Formula One, but. Mm -hmm. 
in Superbike, we don't have the obviously the same power as MotoGP. The power in MotoGP is incredible, so they need to start looking in different areas to keep the bike on the ground and, and create downforce and, and extra grip. But in Superbike, I'm not, I'm not sure that. Um, well, firstly, I think for the rules, we couldn't do it because it has to come standard on the bike. But in a you know, theoretically, if, if the rules were, were or hypothetically, if, if the rules were open. Uh, we could we could put them on, but I'm not sure you'd get the same advantage as MotoGP because the bikes are so much more powerful, and it's it's also to help wheelie and things like that in MotoGP. Whereas here, you know, we need as much power as we can get. Uh, okay. Next question is: What is your hobby outside from motorbike? A little bit of everything, to be honest. I, oh. I try to not keep my hobbies, you know, at two wheels, but. You know, naturally, all my hobbies are two wheels. Um, but you know, I, I drive go karts, I snowboard. I um, last week I'm learning to surf. Um, you know, all sorts. I try to try to try many different things and not get too bored and keep it interesting. Try to have fun. I enjoy traveling. You know, that's I'm lucky with the job that we get to go to all these different countries and uh, I try not to make it. Uh, Thursday till you know, Sunday night. I, I always try to you know, open my mind a little bit and see something new about the different country and and uh, yeah, basically explore the different culture cultures that we of the countries that we travel to. And that for me, is quite interesting. Um, and it makes this feel less like a job and more of a hobby, which I get paid to do. So it's not too bad. Maybe you can also uh, uh, try to go to Indonesia. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I was in in Bali last week, yeah. so that's I think it's probably my favorite place in the world. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it's um, any opportunity that I get in the future, I'll be going back well, to Bali, but also I'd like to see the rest of Indonesia. It's obviously yeah. a really big place, so um, yeah. And uh, if you've got some advice, let me know oh, okay. where where to travel. <laughs> okay. And. Uh, next question is. Every rider must have both to be world champion. What is the best combination rider should have to add or make that goal come true? Um, <clears throat> it's a combination of, it's a big puzzle. You know, I'm still learning, I'm 29 years old now, mm -hmm. and I'm still learning and some riders, you know, they have a, a different path and they grow up in a different way and you know, the natural talent is obviously incredibly important, but I'm also a a big believer in the uh, the nurture side, not only nature but nurture, where where I think if you practice enough and you train enough and you concentrate and you're determined and if you've got all these ingredients, then I think that that can sometimes be uh, you can have more success than a talented rider that doesn't doesn't work. So um, for me, it's a combination of everything. And natural talent is not only enough. Uh, it has to be the complete package and like I said I learn something every year and I feel like I've been on motorbikes all my life so um, yeah there's there's a lot of different ingredients but I think that the main thing the main thing is yeah, determination and um, yeah, just uh, learn okay so uh, the last question is what is your favorite school in kindergarten or something else and also what is your Favorite subject? Um, good question. My favorite school was probably high school. Uh, I think, yeah, because I was I was racing a lot. Mm. But when I because I was racing a lot, I would spend a lot of time away from school. And then when I went back to school, I really appreciate spending time with my friends because when I'm from 13 years old, I've always been traveling the world and 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 not spending as much time in school as what I should be. So. I think I, I learned to appreciate from a young age that it's nice to be around friends and and uh, you know even though sometimes if you spend every day at school it can be you know it can be a bit a bit boring but uh, when you go back and see your friends you realise how much you enjoy it so um, yeah that for me was I think high school and favourite subject um, I'm, I've always liked languages not too bad at, at languages now I speak some Italian with the team. Um, but the physical subjects, so PE and uh, yeah, the fitness stuff, I, I always enjoyed that because 
I don't like being indoors very much. I like to get outside and, and, and have fun. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. For the time. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was good. <laughs> really good.